Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo Academy, the show where we teach you how to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So if you want to get that, make sure you stay until the end. Also, if you want to follow me along and do the edit on your own computer, make sure that you jump into the description, click on the link there and download the sample files. Also, if you do not own Luminar Neo, make sure you use the link in the description together with the discount code so you can get the best deal on your new purchase. And finally, we would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, I want to show you how to edit your summer vacation photos in Luminar Neo. Now, before we're going to start with the edit, I have a few things to cover. Number one, we're not going to be creating a fine art edit here today. What we're trying to do is to take your summer vacation photos and make sure that they stand out. Number two, the idea and the strategy we're going to apply is to create an edit that we can then take and apply it to the hundreds of images you're going to bring back from your holidays. Of course that the edit will vary a little bit depending on where you went and what was the weather and so on. However, the strategy and approach is going to be the same. So how are we going to do this? First of all, we're going to take care of the biggest and most visible mistakes in the develop tool. To follow, we will take care of the body and face by using some of the tools available in a portrait section of our main toolbar. After that, we will add an additional pop by using some of the tools like a color or super contrast. And at the end, we will see which of the special effect tools we can use safely enough so they can be applied to many different images. So as you can see, we are once again in Luminar Neo and we are starting in the catalog module. We are now looking at the sample files and just as always in all of our videos, if you want to download the sample files and do the edit on your own computer, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, click on the link there and that will bring you into our Dropbox account. From there you can download the files and continue alongside me. So as you can see we are ready and to start with we're going to be editing this image with a lovely couple and two kids. Once you're ready simply click on the image and click on the edit on the top of your screen to bring it into edit module. So here in the edit module we're going to follow the strategy we planned. We're going to start by taking care of the biggest and most visible problems on the image. Before we're going to go into the develop tool, we're going to use one of the Luminar's Neo AI tools and that's the Enhance AI. So let's go into our main toolbar and open the Enhance AI. Now this is a great tool as it adjusts it individually for each of your photos. So it's really powerful and very clever to use on multiple images. Starting with the Accent AI. I would go somewhere around 30 as that's usually a safe line to go when you're preparing an edit for bigger amount of images. With the sky enhancer we can also use that and again we want to be quite careful so I think somewhere around 20 will work for us. We can always double check what it does to the image by clicking on the little eye icon on the top of the tool and see what we're getting. You can see that we get a little bit more contrast and more colors on the sky as well as across the entire image. Once we finish with the Enhance AI, we can close it, apply it to the image and move into the Develop tool. So we open it by clicking on its name and we're going to start from the Light section. So what are some of the problems we see on this image? Well, we have a really bright highlights and then we have a really dark shadows. So for this, we can come back to our Develop tool and in the highlights, we can make them darker by sliding the slider down to somewhere around minus 80. Minus 80 is about as far as I usually go. Then with the shadows, we want to open them. We want to make them brighter. So we're going to go with the slider on the opposite direction. And again, looking at the image, 70 is almost too much. So let's stick to somewhere around 60. Once we finish with this, we want to add some additional contrast as by pushing the highlights and shadows, we make the image a little bit flat. So with the smart contrast, Let's go somewhere around 20 or 30. Let's keep an eye on the image. 
and I think somewhere around 30 is looking good. You can see that with the contrast, we're also getting additional pop in the colors, and everything is standing out a little bit more. Now we are finished with the light section, and we can move to the black and white. With the blacks and whites, you can keep an eye on your histogram, and if you don't see it, you can right click on the image and just click on show histogram here. The idea with the histogram is that you don't want to go too far to the right to make it too bright or too far to the left to make it too dark. So let's have a look at it. With the whites, let's just make them a little bit whiter. So somewhere around here, it's fine. Maybe that's even too much. And with the blacks, let's have a look. We can go a little bit further. I think somewhere around minus 30 will work very well too. Now, after that, we're going to move into the color section. So we can close the black and whites and move into the color section. I like to use a little formula here. I like to bring the saturation down in overall to somewhere around minus 20 or maybe minus 15. So I will bring down the overall saturation and then I will bring the pop back with the vibrance. So I think somewhere around 10, 15. So that way we bring in down some of the really strong colors and popping out some of the other colors with the vibrant slider. Once we're happy with it, we close the color section and move into the sharpness. When we're working with the sharpness, it's always good to zoom in to 100%, which you can do by clicking on the little zoom button down on the screen and click on 100. That will bring us in. Now we can move to the area where we see the sharpness. And depending on the sharpness on your image, you can go high. I usually like to go somewhere around 20. I don't worry about the radius, but with the masking, in most of the cameras, it's good to go somewhere between 60 and 70. What the masking does, it's making sure that you're not sharpening the areas which have no textures or details. Once we're happy with the sharpening, we can just click and zoom out. Now, just like with the Enhance AI, we can now see what we've done to the image by clicking on the little eye icon. And let's see the before and after. And I really like the direction we're going, so we can close the tool and apply it to the image. After this, we have the step number two, and that's to take care of the face and the body. So we will bring our attention towards the portrait section of our main toolbar. And here we're gonna go directly into the skin AI. Here we have two sliders that are excellent for these type of images. And again, because it's an AI tool, they will adjust to each and individual picture. With the amount slider on a skin to make it a little bit softer and a little bit more prettier, I don't like to go too high maybe just somewhere around 10 or 15. So it just makes everything a little bit smoother and a little bit nicer, nothing too crazy. Where with the shine removal, I really like to go crazy here. I really like to remove as much shine as possible. Well, let's zoom into his face, for example, and let's see the before. You can see how much shine is on his forehead and the nose, and let's see the after. It really helps and makes everything a little bit more even. So looking at the result, I'm quite happy with it. So I think for the time being, we are done with the portrait section. We can close the skin AI tool and then move to the next step, which was adding an extra pop to the image. For this, let's use the super contrast tool in a professional section of our main toolbar. And again, open it by just clicking on its name. Here we have a three sliders. And if you wanna learn about each one of them and how to use them, you can watch the full tutorial and the video should be available in the top right corner of your screen. However, just looking at the image, we know that we wanna bring a little bit of contrast in highlights. And again, stay around 20, don't go further than that. Also a little bit of contrast in the mid-tones, which I think is looking very, very nice, bringing a little extra pop to his shirts and their clothes in overall. And with the shadows, generally, I like to leave it quite low, as it brings some additional brightness and exposure to the image, and it kind of take away the effect of the contrast. Once we finish with this, we can close it, and I think we are done with adding an extra pop to this image. Let's have a look at the before, and let's have a look at the after. I think the result so far is looking great. Now we can move to the creative section of our main toolbar and see what are the tools that are safe enough to be applied to multiple images. For me, there are two tools that can do this here, the matte tool and then the mystical tool. Let's start with the mystical tool. I really like to use a mystical tool on many different projects as it adds very gentle glow, make everything smoother and everything stand out. So just gentle amount of mystical tool 
really makes everything a little bit prettier. So somewhere around 20 works very well. Once again, we have a full tutorial on the mystical tool. If you want to watch it, there will be a link in the top right corner of your screen. And to finish it off, we should definitely use the matte tool. So let's open it. Because with the matte tool, it will make your image look a little bit more cinematic and it will make them stand out a little bit more. So I think in a matte, what you want to do, you want to go with the amount to somewhere around 15, 16, maybe even 20, maybe not 20, 15, and then add some additional fade. So I think somewhere around 10 is looking great. Maybe even just five, six. Let's have a look at the before and after. And I really like that. You will see the effect of the matte tool on a darker images. However, trust me, it really adds a little bit of something special to the images. So again, when we're talking about special effects to your images, I think the matte and mystical on summer vacation photos are the places to go. And finally, to finish the overall thing, I would always finish it with the vignette. So that will bring us back to our essential tools. And at the end, you can see the vignette tool here. Now, go into the amount slider and simply bring it down to somewhere around 2030 until you start to see the vignette coming and just leave it there. You almost can't see it. However, I really like of the effect of getting a vignette around the image and bringing more attention to the subject in the middle of it. So that's about it. Now, once we're done with the vignette tool, we can again close it, apply it to the image, and we are almost finished. Now, let's have a look at the before and after, again, by going down to the bottom of the screen, clicking on the eye icon, and I think the difference is huge. It's really cool. Everything stands out, everything is a little bit smoother, more natural, and it's looking great. Now, of course, as I mentioned on the beginning, the whole idea is being able to take this edit and apply it to multiple images. So there are multiple different ways you can do this. However, probably the smartest way is to create a preset out of this. So how are we going to do this? We're going to go into the actions here on the bottom of the screen and click on the little arrow there. There is revert to original, which would delete all the edits. And then there is a save as preset. So we click on that and that will bring our image back into the presets module. In the presets module, we are in my preset section and here we have the new preset. So now we can call it whatever we want. So let's call it summer vacations. Once we finish, we just hit enter and the preset is ready for us to use. So let's go back into our catalog module and let's select another image. So image with the same family, different shot, different framing. Now, instead of going into the edit and creating the edit again, we can jump into the presets. In the presets, we can just click on the preset summer vacation, it will be applied to the image and you can see the result immediately. Now let's have a look at it before and after, before and after. And I think it's really, really cool. You can see how it's standing out and it's ready to be printed and shared with your family and with your friends. Now let's go back into the catalog module again. And in the catalog module, let's pick this image with the lady on the flamingo. From here, we're gonna bring it into the presets. And in the presets, let's click on our summer vacation preset. Now looking at it, the picture look over processed and the edit is a little bit too strong. But that's completely normal. The preset will not work on all images. But how to fix this? Well, the good thing is we don't have to start from beginning. All we need to do is to keep the preset on and move this image into the edit module. In the edit module, instead of going through all the edits again, we just need to move in our edits tab. And here we can adjust all the steps one by one. You simply start at the bottom of the list by editing the enhanced AI and you work your way up to the vignette tool. You want to keep an eye on your image and adjusting the slider to create nice but natural edit. Once you finish, you go back into the presets and you save it as a new preset and you can call it something like summer vacations lighter. After that, we can try this preset and this look on another image. Well, let's go back into our catalog. And in the catalog, we have this final picture and the lady. So now we can bring it back to the presets. And let's see, we're gonna apply the first preset and see what it's gonna do. And as you can see, it's all right, but it's really, really strong again, especially the sky is a little bit too much. Where when I apply the second preset, the edit is much more natural. However, if we go for the before and after, you can see how it makes everything else stand out. It takes care of the shine, it makes the sky a little bit bluer, it brings the color out, it makes everything a little bit more smoother, and I think the result is really nice. 
So this is the whole idea. Now you have a two presets and you can just choose between two of them anytime you edit your summer vacation photos. And now it's time to get your gift. If you want to get access to our Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, all you need to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift. And there you can download the cheat sheet and start to use it right away. And there you have it. So I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share our video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.